you're headed out of town. I know what some of you guys may be thinking, how on earth do I navigate dieting while traveling? Some might say I'm the travel queen and I'll take that title. Last week I talked all about how to navigate around eating out and still hitting your goals within your diet or even if you're not in a diet. But a very close second, if not tied with eating out that causes stress in a diet is traveling. When Alex and I first started dating, I was in prep and we were doing long distance. So we were driving six hours about every other weekend to see each other. With being in prep, I had to be very particular when it came to travel and I wasn't going to go too long without seeing the man that I loved. Being in prep, I had to be very on point. So traveling and being in prep gave me a lot of practice on how to navigate all of the barriers that people face within traveling. Because of those experiences, I've been able to really nail down a travel system that's going to allow me to decide how I need to show up for travel. The first thing I always ask myself is what type of travel is this and what are my goals? In other words, I'm really setting the intention for the trip. How you answer that question is gonna determine everything else that you go through within travel. The important part of this is the intention. Is this a trip that you're having more flexibility, it's untracked, it's a vacation? Or is it where you're going out of town for a few days and you can stick to your game plan and still hit your macros? Or maybe it's something a little bit in between, but knowing what the goal of the travel is, as well as what your intention is, will only bring you success. Once you've answered that question, the next question that you have to ask yourself is, how do I wanna feel? This allows you to set up your non-negotiables for the trip. So regardless of the type of trip for me, I have things that I'm going to prioritize, things like water, protein, movement, digestion, sleep, and nutrients. I can still prioritize all of those things even when I'm not tracking, but the trip might look a little different if I am tracking and trying to hit a specific goal. This goes along with the first question, but deciding if you're gonna train when you're there or not is gonna be really helpful as you plan out and not only pack your clothes for travel, but just being able to figure out how your schedule needs to go before you leave on the trip. If you wanna have a list of some of the questions I ask myself before traveling, then head down below to the description box and there will be a link to get a freebie from our email list giving you just that. And if you wanna hear more in depth on the system that I have, then leave a comment below so that we can film another video and answer any of the questions that you might have as well. I'm off to make sure that we have everything packed for the trip, but let's go ahead and check in with Alex and see a little bit more inside the diet. Welcome back to my desk. Today, we're going to review week three of the diet. Let's hop in. As we look at Sue's readings, this is going to be our first week after her having her menstrual cycle, as well as getting that stomach bug, she was able to have all of her tracking without any life events skewing the data. With this first week of data, we did not see the scale trend down. Although we continue to see physique photos making slight improvements, we're going to get a little bit more aggressive with the calorie deficit. As we get more aggressive with the calorie deficit, we have an opportunity to take from either carbohydrates or fats. As we have a greater priority on our lifestyle and being able to go out to eat and doing things in a more flexible manner, it's going to be best for us to keep our fats at a higher place to give us an opportunity to go out to eat and eat those foods while still being able to stay within our macro allotments. Thus, as I've gotten more aggressive with Sue's dietary intake, we're going to decrease her calories by 10% and take that 10% of calories from her carbohydrates. Sue's carbohydrates are going to move from 225 grams to 175 grams while maintaining a fat intake of 60 and her protein is going to stay strong at 150 grams. Now, as we look at my progress, we're going to see that from a scale perspective, I am staying at a 1.46 average weight loss from week to week. If you go back to the first episode, I had a goal of 1.25 to 1.5 pounds of fat loss per week. Thankfully, we're on the higher side of that average and what we're actually going to do because my hunger signaling has been quite high and my training performance has had moments in which it's been a little hindered, we're going to actually bring calories up ever so slightly. We're going to increase by roughly 200 calories and see if the increase in calories allows for me to improve overall training performance and does not hinder my ability to continue to lose body fat. 
Those 200 calories are going to be placed in my carbohydrates. So I will have 210 grams of protein still, my carbs will move to 290, and then my fats will stay at 67 grams. Now, as Sue and I both are making adjustments at this point in the diet, we don't need to overcomplicate things and try to restructure our meals entirely. We're going to be eating pretty much the same meals, but I'm going to be increasing the quantity of carbohydrates probably around my training sessions, while Sue will be taking away carbohydrates in her meals that are not surrounding her training. We want to keep a majority of our carbohydrates around our training session to our best ability to allow for us to perform as best as possible. Now, as we compare photos, I've selected a couple that are going to illustrate some of the changes that I've seen physically in both of us. When I look at the side-by-sides of Sue, I'm going to see greater detail being pulled out of her upper back and her arms leaning out as well as I'm seeing in Sue's midsection that she is starting to look a little bit more watery, which as we've talked about in previous episodes, this is a sign that we've worked through the muscle glycogen and are starting to work on that stored body fat. And so the next photos that we see of Sue, I'm sure that her midsection is going to be a little bit tighter and a little bit more crisp. Now, as we look at the physique photos for myself, we're going to see a couple of things when looking at the front shot. In a previous episode, I had talked about how my legs had lost a little bit of size because that muscle glycogen had come down and my body was starting to work on that stored body fat. In this week's photos, we're going to see a little bit more detail being pulled out of my legs. Thus, we've gotten through that stored body fat and now we're just going to kind of cycle through this process where I'm back to a point where glycogen stores are a little bit more replenished and I'm going to get back depleted and we're just going to continue to work through this. And this is a matter of staying patient because I know many men find themselves in a scenario that as they continue to diet down and they see that scale trend down, they find themselves getting a little worried that they're losing all their muscle tissue. Stay patient, continue to push forward, and trust in the process that you're going to get where you want to be because this point in the diet is challenging, but very important for you to get to your end goal. Another area that I'm noticing greater fat loss at this point in the diet for myself is going to be through my back. Now, I do want to provide a little bit of a disclaimer that I'm not completely relaxed in my photos. Trust, I'm not getting on the internet and just coming in here, plopping in front of you. I'm gonna have a little subtle flex at all times, so there's going to be a little bit of muscular tension in my photos, and that's going to continue to show more detail through the muscle bellies as the diet continues. One thing I want to reiterate is that our adherence has been 95% plus throughout the entirety of the diet thus far. Even with our travel this past weekend, we were able to stay in alignment with our macronutrient intake with some flexibility when we were eating with friends, eating with family, and we were able to continue to see the progress that we desire to see. We are 21 days into our diet, closing in on the one month marker. And this is oftentimes where people start to fall off because they feel as though that they should have made more progress by now, or they feel as though that they should reward themselves for the hard work that they put in. Fat loss is about patience. We're only a third of the way into this diet, and the best thing that we can do for ourselves is continue to trust in the process and maintain our adherence so that we can reach the goals that we have in place. I don't know if you ever struggled with this, but I know when I first got into fitness, I actually really despised travel because it seemed just so difficult to navigate around, and it's difficult regardless of if you're dieting or not. So especially since this was your first time dieting and traveling in quite some time, what were some obstacles that you faced or just what was the experience like? You make it considerably easier for me. You get the food packed, you get everything taken care of. So I do have that luxury of you as my partner, but it is still a challenge for me when we travel because I do want to be so on point with the diet itself. It just puts you in a situation where that's not a real possibility, unless you wanted to treat it exactly like a contest prep, which we're not trying to do. And so you really have to navigate through your thoughts and be honest and clear with yourself of what the true goal is. And I think that that was something that adversity wise, I experienced throughout this and was able to overcome. So I was very proud of that. I know for myself, when it comes to travel, I like to minimize the time I have to train when I am traveling. Not only do I prefer our home gym, but it just takes away a variable that makes it easier. So we had planned to train on Thursday before we left. We wouldn't have to train the whole time we were there, be able to come home Sunday and train. 
but we didn't end up training on Thursday. The day was absolutely insane and it made more sense not to train. But then we both didn't train, so it was like, okay, at least we can do it together of going to a gym. And we had one picked out in Indiana and we were all set to go, but came Friday and we were both exhausted and we had to make the decision, do we go and train but not have as much time with the people that we're visiting or do we not train and we wait to train when we get home on Sunday and spend that quality time. And I think that comes back to those travel questions that I always go to is what is the goal or intention of the travel? And when we were deciding, the thing you actually said was, we're here to spend time with them. So let's go ahead and do that. One thing with travel is that it almost never goes perfectly. Speaking on Thursday, we had full intentions to leave here, I think at like four or five o'clock in the afternoon evening, and we didn't leave until- Eight or nine. Yeah, <laughs> 9 p.m. And we didn't get there till midnight. And so it really set us back and it could have been something that we really beat ourselves up over. And one of the things that I really try to drive home with myself and with my clients is to roll with the punches when we're traveling because things are going to come up, things are not going to go perfectly to plan and you're gonna have to adjust and adapt to keep yourself on track. One thing I always remind myself when it comes to travel is being intentional, not perfect. And you really can't be perfect, of course, but being able to lead with intention and our intention for that trip was to spend quality time with friends, but we also knew that we could control food and we could control our steps. While training was not necessarily completely out of our control, we made the conscious decision not to train, but we did do the things that we needed to do. And one great thing that I think you did was we were sitting and hanging out with our friends and Alex just said, hey, can we take this on a walk? Can we continue talking and go on a walk? And it was so incredible from my side because normally it's me trying to hit a metric and I might have felt like, oh, I have to go do this alone or maybe I'm just not gonna hit my steps today. But you were proactive, you had the goal too. And so it was really nice that we had that together and that you were able to pitch it and we were able to spend some quality time with the people that we were visiting while still being able to hit the goals that we had. When it came to food, we prepared as if we were going to eat the foods that we had brought with us, but maintain the flexibility that the friends we were visiting, if they wanted to go out to eat, if they wanted to grill at the house, we had the opportunity to substitute those meals and eat with them. It's not that the food that we would have gone out and ate was perfectly within our macros, but we were going to be mindful with the foods that we selected and really make it about spending time with the friends that we were there with and not about going hog wild on the different foods that are not normally in our diet. One of the hardest things to do with nutrition and traveling is getting in your protein intake. So we were able to be prepared with protein bars and protein powder. We didn't end up using the protein powder, but I'd much rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. The funny thing is, I don't even know if the friends that we were visiting knew that we were dieting. It's important if you are dieting and traveling and spending time with friends, even if you're just going out to dinner with some friends at home, it does not need to be the focal point of your conversation to tell them about your diet. Now, if you're asked about it, go ahead, fill them in, tell them all the great success that you're having, but it does not need to be the leading point of conversation each and every time you have someone to talk to. To switch gears away from nutrition, I wanted to go into training a little bit. I know oftentimes people think since I have less food, I'm dieting, I either shouldn't train as hard or I just can't lift as heavy. Do you find that to be the case? I actually don't see this to be the case. And the reason for that is more often than not, when individuals start a diet is that they start to be more consistent with the variables that are going to positively impact their training performance. They're going to track their food more concisely. They're going to get more of their steps in. They're going to prioritize their sleep more. They're going to be more hydrated. And by doing those things more consistently, their training performance enhances. And that's what I've seen for myself. I've actually gotten stronger over the first three weeks. Now, there may be a time in this diet where I get to week nine, 10, 11, and 12, that my strength does start to maybe decline as my body weight has gotten significantly less. But in the early stages here, I've actually seen my strength improve. Well, same freaking here. <laughs> I have felt so good. I know I've texted you quite a few times and said, did you know that I'm super strong? Did you know that I'm jacked? Uh, just to hype myself up and to make sure that you know that I am super strong and jacked. 
Now, part of me feeling stronger definitely comes from having a lower rep range with longer rest, so I am able to lift more weight. But I have found exactly what you said of just honing in, keeping my logbook too really intact and not letting me mentally tap out before I physically do. Because that's what I see time and time again with dieting is people convince themselves I have less food, I'm not able to train as hard when you can keep your strength for the most part through a majority of the diet. I'm finishing up the final week of my hypertrophy phase, and I'm a little anxious going into my next training stimulus because I am aware that it's probably going to be a metabolic emphasis. Now, this is going to be much more endurance-based training, lower rest periods, and higher rep ranges, and just not my cup of tea but I know that it's going to be helpful from a physique standpoint and because I'm not good at it as well as I don't enjoy it so much, it's probably something that I need to be doing on a more regular basis. So in that, I'm excited to get into it. When we look at the rules that we put in place, I will say that I've had a little bit harder time just peeling myself away from my desk. And I believe that you've been in the same boat here. And even today, I'm not where my steps need to be. I know I should have gone on a second walk, but thankfully it stays lighter outside. And so I can go ahead and grab some steps but actually I'm going to go meet my family out. And I think that I'm just gonna park further away and to be able to get some steps going in since it is so nice outside and just being able to get to where we need to go. Knowing that travel was going to be part of our weekend, I wanted to try and get as much work as I possibly could get done before we left. I failed at that, but I also struggled to pull myself away from my desk as well. And I wanted to get more time spent outside than I did. And so going into this next week, getting outside for that consistent hour is going to be a big emphasis for me. I did forget to update you guys. Last week, my sleep was piss poor. This week, it's up and up. So super happy with that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to go over, then feel free to leave them in the comments below and share this with a friend that you think would really enjoy this series too. We'll catch you in the next one. Cut. All right.